The Ukrainian commentators have gone silent. Historically, over the conflict, whenever the Ukrainian commentators have gone silent and we're not seeing very much that being reported on the ground, it means Ukraine's up to something, and usually up to something quite big. The potential talks between um, Vladimir Putin and President Erdogan of Turkey are fascinating. Now, we have to recognise that uh, President Erdogan of uh, Turkey and the United Nations were the in original negotiators of the Black Sea Green Initiative um, and, and got that started. So um, you know, Turkey is the lead country in this. And Turkey and President Erdogan in particular has for a large proportion of the, the, uh, the conflict been sort of sitting on the fence you know, he's a NATO country leader, but he has been um, careful not to openly criticise Vladimir Putin um, too much and openly not support President Zelensky and the Ukrainians too much. But it's interesting, uh, only a few weeks ago when President Zelensky visited um, Turkey uh, and then left with the commanders of the uh, units that uh, defended the Azov steel um, works in Mariupol, uh, and were captured by the Russians. Uh, their release was negotiated by the Turks, but to Turkey, on the understanding that they would not be given back to the Ukrainians um, until after the conflict had finished. And then President Erdogan released them um, and then made some quite strong anti-Russian statements in the, the, the days following. Um, so it seems as if he jumped off the fence again uh, and something had happened to upset him from the Russian perspective. He may be trying to jump back on the fence again, but again, what all of this is telling me is that there's an awful lot of diplomatic effort going on in the background that we are not aware of. Turkey is central to a lot of that, um, and Turkey still has the ear of President Putin. Um, if ever there was a hope for a negotiated settlement, um, and this conflict will only finish with negotiations, but once the conditions are set, for those negotiations and those conditions will have to be acceptable to the Ukrainians first and foremost, and the Russians will just have to accept what's what's there. Um, once once those conditions are set, um, then you know I think what President Erdogan is doing is critical in making sure that negotiations could start as quickly as uh, as, as would be practicable. It's interesting. You know, we had the. Two helicopters, an MI-24, which is an attack helicopter, and an MI-8, which is a transport helicopter, uh, flying over the village of Biologia, excuse my um, Polish pronunciation. But um, it's, a, it's a few kilometres across the, uh, the Polish border from Belarus. Um, Belarus, I don't think, has made a formal comment on it. Poland has condemned it and moved um, a lot more troops up to the border between um, Poland and Belarus. Um, but interestingly, uh, we've had the discussion of um, the Wagner Group potentially moving to try and close that um, Suvaki uh, gap that's between Kaliningrad, um, Poland, and Lithuania, um, that, that, uh, and, and, and Belarus itself. So that small strip of territory that's separating Russian Kaliningrad from, from Belarus, um, that's in there, and, and, and keeping it isolated and surrounded by NATO countries. Interestingly, the UK Ministry of Defence has assessed that the Wagner troops that are inside Belarus um, do not have any of the heavy equipment that would be needed to uh, even posture to threaten, um, never mind carry that threat out. So uh, again, a lot of this is words rather than actual capability that's in there. And I suspect the helicopter overflight itself was probably an accident. It was an accident because you know the, the village was a couple of kilometers across the border. The helicopter's moving at you know two to three hundred kilometers an hour um, information. Uh, we don't know how good the the uh, Belarus pilots and navigators would be. Um, and in reality, if if you're not very good, if you're moving fast, if you're if you're messing around in a border area, you know, I've I've known conditions beforehand where experienced pilots have accidentally strayed into places where they shouldn't do because they've got their map reading and the navigation slightly wrong. The other thing is they could be relying on GPS or uh, the Russian equivalent, and there could be jamming of that um, and spoofing of that going on around the border area. We, we just don't know at the moment. It's interesting. One of the things that struck me in the last few days is that um, the Ukrainian commentators have gone silent. Um, and... Even more unusual, the Russian commentators have gone relatively silent as well. Um, 
historically, uh, over the conflict, whenever the Ukrainian commentators have gone silent and we're not seeing very much uh, being reported on the ground, it means Ukraine's up to something, and usually up to something quite big. Um, when the Russian commentators go silent, what that has meant in the very few occasions it's happened beforehand is that there's real pressure coming from Moscow to try and control the message, and they're not quite getting an understanding as to what that control should be. So uh, rather than get the wrath of Moscow, they don't, they don't say very much at all. That, um, from an assessment perspective, would suggest that the Russians are really worried about potentially what the Ukrainians are planning.